Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to Fraction Overview number 4. As with previous overviews, we're focusing on those civilizations that are slightly lesser played. So, let's have a look at the whipping boys of the film 300, The Persians. As always, let's begin with a quick overview of the most poignant attributes of the faction. So the first thing to mention is that, like the Morians, they get a population bonus of 10%. They also have more buildings, structures, and even a hero that can train soldiers, as well as having a number of unique upgrades that reduce training time. So, their strength lies mostly in their numbers. Get ready to spam them out. They're also the only civilization that has both rams and elephants, which, as these require vastly different countermeasures, make the combination deadly, especially if your opponent is set up to defend against only one. They are also the archer civilization, with loads of bonuses, which means they can offer these units plenty of range support. And the final area that they're big in is cavalry, where they have access to spear, skirmisher and sword horsemen, as well as an archer unit via the chariot. So in short, the full gamut. Let's quickly go over the starting units. Now these are archers and spearmen, which is not my preference, as I don't think the archers' lack of damage is compensated for by their extra range when you compare them to skirmishers. And skirmishers are only available for the Persians in Phase 2. However, it should still be fine to see off any early cavalry raids, albeit you're slightly more vulnerable to slinger rushes. But enough of that, what about the cavalry that I've been teasing you about? Well, there's a big range of cavalry. They're the only faction that has access to all four types, lancer, archer, sword and skirmisher, albeit the archers are in the form of chariots. And before you ask, no, the chariot isn't super strong. It's got exactly the same stats as a camel or a horse archer, and that's really disappointing. But more interestingly, they can build these from a specific building, the cavalry stable. So let's just move on to the buildings and find out a little bit more. One of the first things that you'll notice with the Persians is the large number of buildings and the fact that units are trained across all of them. For example, the fortress provides your champion cavalry and rams, but a Persian hall is required for elephants and infantry champions, while yet another building, the Persian palace, provides your heroes as well as the Persian immortals, which is yet another champion unit, as well as providing a constant trickle of all resources, which is a nice bonus. So it's complicated, yes, but it does mean that you can train from many places at once, making it much faster to replenish your army. Now the same principle here applies to the separate barracks and cavalry stable. This leads you to being able to produce both types of unit early on, as both buildings cost only one resource, wood for barracks and stone for stables. You're able to build both right from the start, allowing for a quick increase in army size. The only other building that you have of note is the Gate of Ishtar. Now this gives extra loyalty to buildings within 75 metres, meaning that your opponent will probably need to destroy rather than capture any close by buildings. So all in all, interesting, probably best sums it up. Now, the upgrades for Persians definitely deserve their own section, as they're a fantastic USP, so here they are. First up we have one that's the same for the Morians, Archery Tradition. This gives 10 bonus metres in range and 20% reduction in training time, but with 20% less health. Now this applies to infantry and to chariots, so you can easily make archers the centrepiece of your army. Added to this, you can use levy infantry. Now this reduces training time by 20%, but with a 5% health drop. At level 3, you'll probably recognise infantry conscription, as it's available to all factions. However, unlike for other factions, you must have obtained levy infantry first to get this, meaning you have to suck up the 5% health drop. Anyway, conscription offers a further 15% off training times, but only for batches. Now an individual soldier takes 10 seconds. Now for an archer, if you get the archery tradition, this is going to come down to 8 seconds to train one. With the levy, it's going to come down again to just 7 seconds for a single soldier. While for the non-archers, you're going to find that can only come down to 8 seconds with the levy. Now if we're looking at batches of 5, we begin by both of them taking 42 seconds. Archery tradition pulls that down for an archer to 34 seconds. The levy takes it down to 27 and conscription a further 4 seconds down to just 23 seconds. While for your other soldiers, they're going to go from 42 seconds down to 34 seconds down to 29. So what about cavalry? Well, something similar applies. Levy cavalry will reduce your training time by 20% but with another 5% health drop. However, this can be counteracted in Phase 3 with Nisean war horses, which will increase their health by 20%. Finally, cavalry conscription reduces their batch training time by a further 15%, which leaves your cavalry looking a lot like this. 
All cavalry start off taking 15 seconds to train an individual soldier, but archery tradition pulls one of your chariots down to just 12 seconds, followed by the levy taking that down again to 10 seconds, while for non-archers you're going to find that the levy just brings it down to 12 seconds. Now if we're looking at batches of five, a batch of five anything is going to start out at 63 seconds. Archery tradition makes that just 51, the levy pulls it down to 41 and conscription finally takes that to just 34 seconds, almost half the time. And for your other soldiers, those that can't wield bows, you're going to find it go from 63 seconds to 51 and finally to 43. Now there's just one more upgrade to talk about and that's Persian architecture. This sees all your buildings get an extra 25% on their hit points and their loyalty, but they'll also take 20% more time to build. So, if you're going to get this, then do it when you've already built most of your buildings, so you get all of the bonus and none of the cost, you little freeloader. Right, so on to champions then. Now the Persians have a champion skirmisher, lancer cavalry, and two, yes that's two, types of spearmen. Now the skirmisher and the cavalrymen are exactly the same as all other factions versions. However, their two spearmen have identical attack, armour and speed stats, but cost different amounts. Now the immortals follow the other faction's costs, while the Carcides hoplites cost no food, but they cost double the metal. Now this can be really useful when you're spamming out archers, as it's very easy to go from having thousands of food to almost none in the space of just 30 seconds or so. However, let's have a look at the Persian Immortals in more depth, as they're far superior due to an available upgrade that reduces their training time dramatically. So the Immortals upgrade is available from the Persian Palace and reduces training time for Immortals by 50%, which, when combined with the Levy Infantry reduction, means that an Immortal can be trained in just 12 seconds rather than the 30 seconds that most other factions will have for their champions. Admittedly, they will lose a further 10% of their health, but this speed is just amazing. If you add in the Batch Training upgrade, it can be as low as 5 Immortals being trained in just 29 seconds. And on top of this, there's an added bonus that comes from one of the Persian heroes. So let's go and find a little bit more about those chaps now. So there are three heroes available, and these are Darius the Great, and he offers 10% movement speed advantage for everything, and that includes trailers and war elephants. He's also a chariot archer, which means he can be useful for raiding opponents' bases later in the game, when you may be able to destroy all their unprotected farmers and kill off their food economy. Xerxes, who is our second option here, offers a 15% gather rate and building rate increase for anyone within 60 metres. But when you consider that he's an infantry archer, this is by far the weakest hero. So, best till last. Cyrus the Great. Now he offers a 20% attack bonus and plus one capture bonus for all cavalry. This is great if he accompanies a group of champion cavalry and can cause real damage. But his most amazing bonus comes in the fact that he can also train immortals. This means you send him into an opposition territory as one person and suddenly he spawns 15 or 20 immortals that can surprise and destroy an enemy's defences if used correctly. Now before I close off the video I'd like to bring up a couple of other interesting things. Firstly, the ram's the only siege weapon available, although they do also have elephants which when used in tandem can be very difficult to defend against. However, it's worth bearing in mind that their rams give an additional 20% of crush damage and can also garrison 12 rather than 10 troops, making them really useful and definitely better than other civilizations' rams. Also, they can train cavalry skirmishers and sword cavalry from their triremes. Now this can be really useful on games where the sides are separated by water, as cavalry can then be built on the opponent's shore without the need for you having territory there, and this means they can disrupt otherwise safe trade routes and butcher your opponent's economy for your main attack. And so on to some tips and strategies to finish off our video. So firstly, get lots of food in to allow you to replenish your armies quickly. Now Persian units are going to die quickly, but when they're upgraded they can take very little time to replace. So have plenty of fields ready to keep up in prolonged battles. And because of the nature of your units being weaker but quick to reinforce, build plenty of barracks as close to the enemy lines as you can to speed up your reinforcements getting to the battle. They're going to die quickly, so don't make their journey getting there be too long. Then, when attacking with siege, try and mix up elephants and rams, as the skirmishers won't really hurt one, and Malay troops are ineffective against the other. This means it can be a very confusing attack to defend against, so use this to your advantage. Also, get metal early on so that you can get the upgrades as quickly as possible. This means you may even need to mine in phase one. You'll then need metal for your champions as well as elephants and rams later on, so try and get more mines under your control, and if that's not possible, then be prepared to set up your trade for this very valuable resource. And finally, expand as quickly as possible. You've got the army for it, and the upgrades mean you can get a huge population very quickly. So use women early on, while still creating a defensive force. If there's a lot of hunt, then use cavalry for this, while being prepared to kill off the women and replace them with soldiers later in the game. 
and so ends another video. I'll see you soon for separate videos on the Cushites and the Athenians, but until then, ciao.